Welcome back, G V Nation. This is your host, G V Craze, aka G V Rex. Today we're doing a review over Quiet Place. Had to do that for the thumbnail. But yeah, let's go ahead and get right into today's video, man. Uh, yes, sir. So, this is just a review over Quiet Place. If you don't know Quiet Place, uh, here's a picture of it right now. You see Quiet Place. She's doing the whatever thing. So yeah, that's my face. So um, this is for pretty much the people that actually knows and are aware of the movie and already seen the movie. So if you haven't seen Quiet Place, go go ahead and check that out. Just go ahead and watch that. Cause ain't no point watching the video if you never seen it. But if you just want to see a review over it and then check it out, then I guess that's up to you. But just know. As of this point forward, is spoiler alert. <laughs> so yeah, this is the Quiet Place 1 review, and I'll be doing Quiet Place 2 review after I see Quiet Place 2, because I have not seen it yet. But I just watched Quiet Place yesterday twice. So yeah, I watched it twice this weekend. One on yesterday and one on Saturday, so yeah. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Quiet Place. The Quiet Place is a 2018 American post-apocalyptic science fiction horror film directed by and starring John Krasinski. And John Krasinski is the main, one of the main characters in the film. He plays as the dad. Uh, written by Brian Woods, Scott Beck, and Krasinski. So it actually is written by and directed by John Krasinski and starring him. So he is a uh, triple threat in this movie. Um, in this film. The plot revolves around a father, Krasinski, as I mentioned, and a mother who struggles to survive and raise their children in a post apocalyptic world inhabited by blind and extraterrestrial creatures with an acute sense of hearing. See, that's how I was trying to figure out whether they were extraterrestrial creatures or whether they were something that was man-made on some um, I Am Legend type of thing. So now that kind of clears it up actually after reading this uh, bio uh, pic of what it, the actual film entails. Now, here's my interpretation of the whole movie since I've seen it twice. The movie picks up and stars with uh, four people in the movie. Star, it starts off with them in this abandoned store. They're in this abandoned uh, town. They're trying to find good, good medication and things that aren't expiring and of well doing for them to be able to use for future and present, present uh, future and present resources. They are um, seem to be farmers. Uh, I'm not sure if they was already previous farmers within the film uh, prior to the apocalyptic era, or whether or not they became uh, farmers and learned agriculture and all that good stuff after the fact. Um, I'm betting that they were already uh, familiar with uh, farm life and agriculture before the fact. Because if they were city folks, they wouldn't have known the thing unless they had read a whole bunch of information in regards to how to do it. But yeah, it's just, it would have it took too much time to learn that over all those, uh, doing all that as the pandemic goes on. And as that, whatever is going on, the apocalyptic era that they're within. Now, as I, as I have noticed, they have over four children within the film. Within the film, there's four children. They start off with three kids. Um, the third kid is very innocent and not aware of the situation at hand and what's going on like the other two kids are. So I'm guessing that the oldest kid was actually alive before the apocalyptic era and that's why she's more aware of the situation especially the adults are definitely more aware of the situation i'm not sure if the kid was aware or or you know knowledgeable of what life was before the apocalyptic era or not. i'm not sure if they had a kid the oldest child before or after the apocalyptic era i'm not sure now the youngest child i know for sure they had you know, before the apocalyptic era. Um, I mean, after the apocalyptic era. And that's what I'm assuming, based off of assumption. Now, I'm not sure when this apocalyptic era began, but from the 
time the kid, the youngest child, uh, that died at the beginning of the movie, the time they, they he was born versus the time he died, that kind of like gives me an idea of where the error of the apocalypse possibly may have happened, either timely before his birth or timely after his birth. And I'm not sure. I want to know, and I hope so. Quiet Place 2 explains that and does like a prequel um, to get a, to help us get an understanding of what happened in their past before we finally uh, divulge and so we can divulge and understand their past so we can uh, so we can read into their past we can understand their, their present so they can find a solution for the future so as they find a solution for the future so I, I, as an audience member I just want to know what the hell are those things? Like, what are those extraterrestrial creatures? What's going on? So we got, and I I forgot to mention the actual character's names. The mother's name is Evelyn Abbott. I think that's the name. last name is Abbott. I'm not butchering the names. It's Ab Abbott. Um, Lee is the father. Mo Evelyn is the mother. Then we got the daughter Regan or Reagan. Let me say Regan. Um, then we got the son Marcus second oldest and then we got the baby boy now that's the one that's the youngest one that died before they had uh, a few years maybe a year or two later had another child in replacement of the baby boy after the green baby was over okay i had to do a tiktok reference yeah i'm sorry all right but no um then we got the man in the woods, which was the old man. Um, the only, out of the other cast members, the only existing person within the film is the biopic in the area. Now, my, I, I, I want to know if the anybody else survived outside of them. them. I'm pretty sure that they, they have, because it's a big world. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that they that there's uh, more than just them that survived this apocalypse. It's always right there. <laughs> For just them to be alive. So that's why I want to see in part two how they gonna scope that out and how they gonna uh, unfold that mystery and also unfold the mystery of these uh, these titans. Uh, unfold the mystery of these titans and help us figure out. Oh. into it so yeah so as I was stating before in earlier I was mentioning that in the film we have the characters and the suggested theme that's going on that is an apocalyptic uh, happenings that's occurring within the film uh, so the family is forced to live in silence while hiding from these monsters uh, the family is forced to live in silence while hiding from these monsters with ultra sensitive hearing. It's crazy. Now listen here. It's ultra sensitive hearing. So if you didn't know already, the characters are at stake in this film. Regan is one of the main characters that got on my nerves throughout this film. And I don't watch it twice. And uh, even though she helped save them at the end. It was just what she was doing, bruh, throughout the movie that just, uh, she was just like an emotional teenage twat, and it was just getting on my nerves, bruh, like, cause she was in that teenage days when she was being rebellious, and getting all in her feelings and stuff, and that was costing her mom's life, I almost cost her mom's life twice, they, her dad specifically told her, and if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, her dad specifically told her, hey, Regan, or in, in this is how I was saying, <laughs> hey, Shawty, I'm gonna need you to hold down your mom until I come back. I'm going with your your bro, your little brother. You know what I'm saying? We finna go check this food out. We finna go hunt. I'm gonna show him how to hunt today. She was like, but I wanna go help you hunt. Be like, bitch, this ain't about you. This is about your brother learning how to hunt with me. We have this father and son time. See your way out. This is an A B situation. See your way out. She like. Oh, I know we're going to have I'm like, bro, come on now, bro. Really? She was getting all emotional for no reason. 
because she felt like that she wasn't getting that extra attention. And I was like, bro, she needs to sit her little ass down. So she said, sit down and meditate on her bull, <laughs> on her stupidity. Because I was like, bro, come on, stop being ignorant and just let <laughs> And and, and, and and protect your moms. Just do what your dad says. Hey man, why are you being why are you being extra? But she wanted to be extra. Go out and leave her mom alone with three deadly monsters ready to gobble her ass up like turkey for Thanksgiving. Excuse my language, but I had to say it. Some nobody else would, so I had to. Alright? I felt some type of way. I was I'm passionate about this. Y'all watched it twice. It was a good movie. I give it a 9 out of 10. And I'm ready to see that sequel, okay? I'm ready to see it so I can understand the happenings of why these monsters even exist and why they are here. Here. Okay? Here. And with that being said, we'll go and finish it up with uh, a few more bullet points of this film and my review over it before... I end today's video. Um, so yeah, just to sum up the rest of the film, we get into the part where uh, if I should have wrote some bullet points, but I'm just gonna go off the top of the dome because I was thinking about it as I was watching the movie for the second time. Things I didn't notice that I noticed within the second time I watched the film, and I was like, bro, what the flip? You know what I'm saying? Because the first time I watched it with my friend, the second time I watched it with my uh, family. So I was explaining to them the situation in, in regards to what was going on within the film so they can understand it themselves. Because there's some things that you just got like, it's like self-explanatory, you just got to figure it out as the movie goes on. So there was certain things I didn't pick up the first time, but the second time I was like, oh, okay, I know what's going on now. Alright, so first time I watched the film, which was literally just this weekend on Saturday, I was like, oh, okay, this is a different type of film at... You literally have to wait 30 minutes before you actually get some dialogue from the characters, like them actually speaking, talking. Because that, because like the first 30 minutes of the movie is, you think they're all mute, you know what I'm saying? Because of the situation that's going on, they're doing sign language and all that good stuff. It's just like, bro. And uh, I'm like, okay, so they're doing all this, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, all right, you doing this? You did this like for like the <laughs> thirty times for like thirty minutes of the movie. Now we're gonna need some more than that. We're gonna need more. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I can hear it. Now. I can hear it. Now. I'm not deaf. I'm not deaf. Okay. Um, all much respect to the deaf, but come on now, fam. This is not Wally. I don't need no whole hour long film of them not saying nothing. <laughs> And it kind of reminded me of Wally when it came to that, in a sense, when it came to the when it came down to the actual dialogue. But we had got subtitles, you know what I'm saying? Unlike with Wally, they didn't literally say nothing for like the first half of the movie. Um, but in this film, they it was pretty much half the movie. I ain't gonna hold you. Like the first 30 minutes of the movie, we didn't get no no dialogue, like only subtitles. But it made it more of an interesting film. Aside from any other film that I've seen before, because of the uh, the less less dialogue within the actual them speaking and conversating with one another, they're actually using sign language and, and it's silent, and you gotta literally be a very attentive to what they're saying and doing within the film because uh, and it allows you to be more immersed and get into the environment of the characters. So I actually like that perspective that they went about for this. It was really dope. It was something different from what I've seen before and different, you know, sci-fi films and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it was dope. Um, and then we get into the part where, you know, seeing how they, uh, they have three different homes or two different homes and then, like, uh, a bin. So the first, the first home is like that, the, uh, what do you call it? the open house home so the open house is all the doors are open they usually use their home, their home in the daytime and they are very attentive and very quiet but also able to get things done that they need to get done 
Now they have to go back to the old school 18th century way of doing things, 19th century way of doing things when it comes to cleaning and washing and utensils and stuff like that. They can't even use a wash machine or dryer. As you've seen in the movie, the mother literally has to go back to the 18th, 19th century and hand wash clothes, bruh. You know how long it takes to hand, not even hand wash, to let clothes dry on a bin and you have to make sure it's not going to rain that day. They don't even know if it's going to rain that day or not. They have to depend, depend on the weather actually staying sunny to decide whether, okay, I can keep it out this long. It, should, it looks like it's going to be a, a sunny, clear sky day. They have to literally depend on the actual looking outside rather than knowing the forecast that it might rain later on tonight or, you know, this or that. It's very difficult, especially in... In my state, in Georgia, the bipolar weather, it could be sunny for one hour and then rain in the next, and then sunny again and rain in the, Like, bro, nobody got time for that. That's what we gotta watch the dry. That's what we gotta technology for. But in this case, certain things of technology value will be a disturbance and a hindrance, and also might put their life in jeopardy. So it's like, dad, bro, what do, we, what do we do? And they figured it out. The dad's very intelligent, he's very smart. Uh, he's very innovative too. He even tries to fix and give his daughter her own hearing aid. Now, at, what I did not mention earlier was the only person that's deaf within the film is the daughter, the oldest child, Regan. Now, that's why she's a little bit mostly distressed. She's emotionally distressed, uh, not only because she's deaf, but because. Uh, she let she let her little brother keep the the rocket toy at the beginning of the movie that led to his demise at the beginning of the movie, and she feels like she got she has a, what you call it a survivor's guilt because of that, and it's like dad, this was really jacked up, bro, and she's like you know trying to fight back for her dad's love. But also, she feels emotionally distressed about the situation at hand because she wants to she wants to be loved the way she she uh, feels. Uh, she wants to be loved rather than just letting it happen naturally and forcing it on her father. And her father's like, "Damn, like I'm trying to show your brother how to do things, and you tripping off of me and all that." So it's just like all this dysfunction within the family. All this going on while the monsters are attentive and uh, and aware of anything that could be of disturbance to the environment around them. So if they make any subtle or brass decisions that may cause abrupt sound, that can lead to them de their death. Their inevitable, inevitable, there we go, inevitable demise. So, yeah, man, it, it, it was very crazy. And just the little things, like, they couldn't even, like, they couldn't even talk with them. Okay, so we have the second home, which I forgot to mention. We have the open house with all doors are locked open and stuff like that. Now, when I first saw them film and I saw the open house, I was like, what the hell? Because, like, during the film, and she kept on getting caught up with the monsters in that open house, that's what was throwing me off. I was like, how the hell do they keep on getting inside the house so easily, bro? Like, y'all ain't got no doors locked around here? Then I have realized within the second film, that's that open house. They use that house to do whatever they need to do in the daytime. And then night is the is the uh, penthouse, the closed house. Almost, it's like the farm bin. They set up until their um, sleeping house. And that's what they use at night is... Uh, it tracks less sound and it's uh what do you call it it's safe for them to live in and um, survive in uh, rather than the regular uh, open house because the open house is more louder it has creaks in this ground just things that can cause them to easily die from just because it's you know the, the stability of the of the home that they once lived in is not safe for them to live in. <laughs> so luckily they live on a farm where they got like three different homes. Now we got the third spot, which is the spot where they t where uh, it's like it's like a the safe room where they go into in in any case or situation in which she had she uh, 
is ready to give birth or stuff like that. So they're they're still trying they're still trying to produce offspring during this whole apo- apocalypse situation going on, which is crazy. Like, bro, I, I I know after I, like, bro, after the third child, even at most, even after the bro, after the third child is gone, bro, like it's time to use Plan B, C, D, and E, bro. I know the rubbers ex- are expired, big fella, but Plan B. Lasses forever. No, <laughs> pull out lasses forever. I'm sorry, but it does. You, you should have pulled out. You should have pulled out. But he was like, nah, let me another one. DJ Cali, let's have another kid. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. And another one. Um. So, yeah, this used as like the safe room um, for them to be able to have an, uh, uh, just in case just in case everything goes haywire that's like the last resort type of room to keep astray from anything occurring until they are able to leave or whatever like that but we get into the part where like I don't know how this happened now, I don't know if this has to do with the plot or whatever, but it was like a water pipe breakage. And I was trying my best to figure out how did that happen. Was it from one of the monsters running, running the muck and he slashed something? Or was it just like, I just want to know specifically. I feel like it's one of the monster that was following them around and trying to get to them. Probably broke one of the water pipes, and that's what led to the water sinking in, seeping in into the ground, and sinking in, and all that stuff. And that underground safe room that they got being filled up with water, and then the fact the monster found its way inside the safe room, whatever, like that. I don't know how if that deals with the plot or whatever may be the case to, to further the story. But we get back to the part where the daughter and son are missing they're trying to figure out where their children are at because the son uh now during all this the mother's been pregnant for the past few months she was expecting within that month uh that they furthered the story up until after the child's death from the beginning of the movie um so the so she was expecting and it's just like okay cool so she expected a baby and you can look at the calendar and it says October 23rd. So she expected the baby October 23rd. But I'm not sure if she knew what day it was. Or if she may have gave birth a little earlier than she expected within that week. And um, all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? During the, situ- the same day that the son and father are going hunting. And the, mo- and the child, the oldest child, the daughter Regan, the deaf one the youngest, the oldest one, she decides to go out on her own and and go and relive her survivor's guilt and hash out what she felt was her uh, trauma from letting her, what she felt was being at fault for letting her little brother die like that. And um, so she uses that rocket. She turns it off and then she puts it back where it lays at and stuff like that. And then we like, okay, you did all that, but you left your freaking mom alone, man. You could have did this at another time being for convenience sake. Come on now, fam. She, she, she left her mom again for the second time to, to, to death. Led to death. Just shameful. First time she did that, uh, it was like it, it, know, the first time she did that, it was like she did. She, I forgot, but just like, come on now, like, bro, she just is like very negligent of her uh, responsibilities, and that's what almost led to all the family dying because of her. It was like she's like, oh, what do you call it? Um, almost like bad luck or something to the family. But she ends up being good luck once her father passes away. And let me mention why he passes away. He's trying to save they silly Bahams 
and get them back home. But for some reason, he tried to take matter into his own hands, which I thought was dumb. He should have just hid with the kids or figured out a way to wait for the monster to run or throw something out in in the area and you know get the kids so they could go ahead and get back home see but no he wanted to fight the monster in the middle of the night knowing daggone well and with the axe at that i could see if he had a shotgun but the axe bro come on fam you really thought you was about to get jiggy with the night slayer with the axe come on now you see what he's done He's taking on bodies on top of bodies, bro. He took out a grown man, his son. He took out animals, bro. He is like the new king of the jungle, bro. Whatever the heck that monster is, and that's why I can't wait to see part two so I can figure out. So we can all figure out what the heck are those things and where did they come from and why? Is, what is the purpose on on landing on Earth and terrorizing every human? society as we know it. Without further ado, that sums up to my oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. The daughter actually saves the day. Technically the father saves the day with his taking advanced technology investment with the hearing aid that he gave his daughter before his death. Because the monster slaughtered his ass. He said swoop slaughtered his ass <laughs> slaughtered him. Cause he wanted to be Captain Saban, and they, uh, yeah, that didn't work out for him. Um, but yeah, a lot of brash uh, decisions were made without much thought on his behalf, and that's what led to his death. But he did help his children survive by sacrificing himself because he was still alive. But. He he couldn't you know he couldn't stop that monster. And he had no weaponry to stop him. So it's just like, okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to just so could sacrifice myself for my children. So he sacrificed himself for his children. And they was like, Dad he was like oh. and you know, the minute he screamed, that monster was like <laughs> You thought it was sweet? And then just slaughtered him, just swoop, got him. Uh, so yeah, that happened. We get back to the to them getting back home. Um, now, one thing I noticed was how the hell did they just take off in a fully motored vehicle, making all that noise to get back home? And the monster didn't think twice about chasing them. And and it's also considered the fact that it's not one, but it's three monsters. So you telling me out of that one monster that was attacking them, the two other ones did not hear a loud ass motor from a vehicle just roaming by back to their home? Okay, now plot armor like hell. <laughs> that is plot armor for you. But um just debunking some things I noticed within a second time watching the film. Um but yeah, so we get to that part. Uh the mother does give birth. I forgot to mention that the mother does give birth, she survives. So this all happens be right before the father's passing. The the baby is born. And uh, and you probably y'all probably wondering how's the baby born, and you know babies scream and yelp and all that stuff and shout when they are born. Yeah, that's why they went to the safe room, the safe house, um, to get away from all that because it's like almost like a soundproof living space. But because they didn't get there in time enough, and the monster heard the baby yelping and stuff, he came in, slashed stuff up. Got one of the water pipes broke and sinked in, found his way into the safe room, and was like, hey, what's up, y'all? We are good. I'm going to hit and of y'all children. But he didn't end up sliding his children. And he ended up uh, going elsewhere. The, the mother and child was safe due to plot armor. And, <laughs> oh, oh, man, plot armor is something else in storylines. Gotta love plot armor. But, um,. Let me see what else I wanted to point out within the film. Uh oh. Um she was being the little the daughter was being very impatient when they was waiting for their father. And that's what kinda led to his death. It's kinda kinda it's 
kind of her fault for not just like waiting it out. She was like, yeah, I know. You think I'm seeing now? I don't want to wait here any longer. Like, bit, you could have slept there and waited until the night, t- the daytime, and then went and checked. But no, you want to be extra. I bring all types of doors. <laughs> and, uh, that's what almost led to them dying in some kettle corn. But, yeah. That was, it was this movie. That movie was wild. Wild to the, to the, ex, the, ex, the extent of No Return. That movie was wild. I liked it, though. I really liked it. That's why I watched it twice. I don't like, I don't watch some twice unless I like it. It's crazy. It was different. It was unique. Um, let's see, anything else I didn't touch? Oh, the fact that they, their strength which is their hearing is also their weakness. So whatever strength they have is their ultimate weakness as well. And the monster's weakness was his hearing. And his hearing is his strength. So they targeted the monster's hearing with the hearing aid that she had, that her dad had developed for her. Because it kept on acting up and going off in her ear. She was able to hear that. But in, the, in return, the monster was able to hear it too, and it triggered him. But it, but she used it to her advantage and tried to like use turn up the volume of it and and stop the monster and paralyze him. Give him, give their mother enough time to shotgun his head off. <laughs> Boom! He thought it was sweet, and sweet for sugar. So that happened. But um, yeah, man, um. That sums up that, and we got to the end of the movie where uh, they, all the other monsters was running to the open house where, where they was at specifically when they figure out how to destroy the monsters. But I want to see part two because I want to know where, where they, how they plan on surviving, you know what I'm saying, and, and what happened after. At C, when she got all the monsters to come in and use that sound barrier thing to, you know, destroy them all. Now, it was confirmed to be three, but at the end of the movie, it looked like it was like several of them running towards the open house. So, I'm just like, bro. What the hell going on? <laughs> hey, but that ends today's video. That's my review. Um, pretty long review. Uh, almost like a half an episode review. A half an hour review. I really liked it. Like I said, nine out of ten. Quiet place really did anything, but this one was different. Um, y'all, let me know if y'all wanted me to do a review and a reaction to the sequel because that's why I'll be doing next is a review reaction to the sequel. But let me know what y'all want me to review and react to the trailer of in regards to any movie that y'all uh, like or, or or want me to see. I can't obviously react to the movie, but let me know in regards to the trailer. Let me react to the trailer or the movie. Uh, you know how they do uh, movie breakdowns and explanations. Let me know if y'all want me to do a reaction to that. If y'all want me to do a movie breakdown re- explanation to The Quiet Place um, 2, because I already know about one, but Quiet Place 2, or, or Quiet Place 2 and 1. Y'all let me know if y'all fans of The Quiet Place, if you've seen it already. Um, let me know what else y'all want me to react to um, in the comment section down below. As far as movies only, movies only, movie trailers only, movies only, reviews, as far as reviews, I'm only doing reviews for movies, not reactions unless it's a movie trailer, then I'll do a reaction to that, um, a reaction and review. But um, I'm looking forward to doing like a reaction uh, to the... Conjuring 3. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing a reaction to a trailer of that. Because i just seen Conjuring 2, so I want to see Conjuring 3. So I'm going to do a reaction to that. And then uh, the trailer, of course. And then do a review for that. Um, so I'm going to do like a review of 1, 2, and 3. Um, but for now, we're just covering Quiet Place. I'm going to finish that up for this week. And we're going to do Quiet Place 2. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to... Uh, watch that this following weekend and y'all gonna be able to see me do a review over that 
as of Saturday. So, thank you for the request to, um, ah, what's his name? Shh, give me a break. Oh, cool. You know, you talk, you know, what I'm talking about cool, cool, uh, I don't know how your name fully bro, but you know who you are. Cool8294, shout out to you for the request for Quiet Place. Put you up on the screen. Shout out to you, Cool8294. I will see you guys in the next video. This is your boy Jimmy Grace, aka Jimmy Reacts. And again, this is by Breakdown, Explanation, and Review over not, I don't, over Quiet Place. And I was about to say I rated a 9 out of 10. So, with that being said, Let's get into Quiet Place 2 Reaction Review in the next video. I will see you guys next time. This is your boy, GMB Creates, a.k.a. GMB Reacts. GMB, out. Peace. Check out my videos, man. I got tons of them. We got a playlist right here. We got a subscription box right there. Check it out and have at it, man. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Roll to 1,000 subscribers. Let's get it. Peace.